the core of this teaching is for us to accept suffering. And once you accept it, uh, you can develop an attitude of appreciation. Of course, at the beginning is a little bit difficult. Uh, as it is stated in Bodhisattva Charyavatara, it says that whatever we encounter, it should not disturb the mind of joyfulness, of joy. Uh, so I said the other day, we should have such kind of flexibility. Things could go this way or that way. It's all fine. Just, uh, just like it is fine if it's raining. If it is fine, it is fine. If it is not, if it is fine, if I have money, because it is a way to accumulate more, um, more merits. If I don't have money, it's also fine because I can practice renunciation. And without money, in fact, it is quite burden free as well. It is fine if I have health because I can practice more virtuous deeds. If it is also fine if I'm not healthy because through such suffering, I can practice to sympathize with sentient beings' uh, suffering as well. When we notice our mind, is encountering some special changes or going through some special experience, then I think those are all opportunities for us to recognize the nature of uh, samsara. Otherwise, if we were to live in a rather mundane life, maybe it doesn't really help us to develop any courage. We've lived in such a way for the past 10 or 20 years. People have food and have clothes to wear. There's no such appreciation towards life. But once you can go out to buy food, buy veggie, vegetables, buy rice even, and during the pandemic lockdown, um, everyone's in confinement and nobody could go grocery shopping, then at that time you can probably develop some more insights, something very new to you. And this kind of new insights could be very profound. It could be even very long lasting and making impact for a long period of time. Maybe from a short term, looking at this type of lifestyle is rather quite cruel. However, through it, you can contemplate more deeply into your meaning of life, uh, into what life is, and into what the nature of this world is. Of course, there are foolish ones who never really contemplate on any of those. doesn't matter whatever they go through. But for people with a bit of uh, capacity of uh, deep thinking, of capacity of uh, uh, analyzing, once they go through any of those extraordinary events, they can, in fact, learn or gain the knowledge and wisdom that they couldn't uh, that they couldn't have uh, during mundane lifestyle so in our life sometimes things may seem difficult but after I think the difficulty it is really up to you of how to uh, use it. For example, during difficulty, if you collapse, if you give up, if you do so, that really means that you are only a foolish one. But during difficulties, if not only you didn't collapse or give up, you use this difficulty as a new opportunity. You see the, uh, the, op the side of opportunity in it. Uh, then you can gain new insights or new knowledge from such difficulties. Therefore, whatever happens, we should have uh, happiness. I think majority of time uh, when we're happy, uh, the weather's good, everything's good, then whatever happens is fine. But when we're going through turbulence in our mind, whatever uh, unpleasant things happen, I think as mundane beings, it is very difficult to uh, accept them. 
uh, but the but suffering and happiness happens alternatively. This is just very normal. Therefore, we shouldn't give up so easily. We shouldn't be uh, depressed and we shouldn't feel that it's hopeless. Uh, shouldn't have the feeling that there's no use of studying the Dharma. I still have so much affliction, so much deluded mind, and then just completely give up. This is in fact unreasonable. This kind of mentality could make your life really miserable and give up all of your effort that you've put in. So whenever you encounter any difficulties, you should uh, use different perspective to look at it. On one hand, uh, you're encountering that because of your previous karma, and on the other, whatever happens right now, it also depends on the um, un- uh, uneven mind and due to different causi uh, causality. But you should still continue to work hard on it. This is quite necessary to contemplate with wisdom. I'm not sure any of you supplicated to the to protectors for to grant you uh, difficulties. If you did, that's wonderful. If you felt that, well, it doesn't matter if I supplicate or not, this is just a theory. Well, maybe some of you would think in such a way, then it wouldn't be uh, beneficial anymore. Now let's continue. When you first begin this training, it is vital to distance yourself from ordinary social activities. Otherwise, caught up in your everyday preoccupation and busyness, you will be influenced by all your misguided friends asking questions like, how can you bear to put up with so much suffering, so much humiliation? Besides, the endless worrying about enemies, relatives, and possessions will cloud your awareness and upset our minds beyond all our control so that we inevitably go astray sliding into bad habits then on top of this we we will be swept away by all kinds of distracting objects and situations this is quite important because this is uh, it talks about the way of uh, practicing this teaching first of all you should depart from anywhere that is very busy let it be a city or in a large crowd or uh, or a social environment or so on we have to depart that kind of busy environment so that we can practice as beginners i think especially it is important to find a quiet place to practice, uh, such as um, uh, monasteries or centers or uh, an arana, which is uh, retreat centers and so on. This is wonderful. But if you really couldn't find a place like that, then your city, you can stay there, but at least try to um, cut off the distractions and uh, uh, dedicate your time to contemplate and practice. Uh, for beginners, if you have uh, such opportunities to uh, to do uh, retreats and then finish your preliminary practices or meditation practices, this is quite necessary. Otherwise, if as Bodhi Buddhists you only grasp onto theories such as the five treatises or tantras and uh, uh, sutras, whatever teachings you can talk talk a lot. Uh, but if you don't practice them without, uh, if you don't practice them, even if you talk, um, if you even if you can talk really well, it doesn't really help you because they're all theories. Therefore, doesn't matter how many days you've studied it, any tiny bit of the teaching, you should put them into practice. Just as simple simplest the teaching, such as the human body is difficult to uh, to gain, and uh, life is impermanence, all of those most basic in the tantras even, I think. 
It is in fact very, very dif different for those who've actually contemplated it and those who had never uh, in, in terms of the depth and experience. They're completely different. S therefore, it is quite important for us to engage in actual practice. In terms of actual practice, I think in, in Chinese Buddhism, in Han Buddhism, um, there are people who would practice in a solitary retreats, of course, in huts or caves, but there are also group practice. This is really wonderful. People would sit together, would meditate together, and then there would be a supervisor holding a board that is called a meditation board that is to um, that is to spank you when you fall asleep when meditators are blessed by the meditation board spanking some of them would get enlightened right away at that moment it happened before in the history of Mahayana Buddhism I think this kinds of uh, uh, different kinds of methods different kinds of uh, styles of practices are in fact quite important are really wonderful Wonderful. Um, therefore, I really encourage the Dharma teachers to lead uh, meditation in groups. At the beginning, it could be a little bit difficult to get used to, but slowly you will understand and you will feel the uh, blessings and you will feel how much insights you will gain from such. Uh, when I read into the history, the historical biographies of great masters from Tang Dynasty to Sui Dynasty and so on, from all of those biography, we can see the great number of masters and practitioners. In fact, they've put lots of efforts into actual practice. Therefore, if we do so as well, I'm sure genuine insights and realization will occur in you as well. So we should also engage ourselves in um, actual meditation practice. Maybe at the beginning we can practice all together in groups, and then uh, we can practice in class as well to build such habit. This kind of meditation habit is in fact quite good to, um, to build when people are at young age. Uh, kids from different places, different regions and countries. There are some young novice uh, and young students. They would start practicing meditation. Some of them, they're too young and they would fall asleep halfway through. But I think it is still a very good habit to practice, to um, uh, to have, especially at a young age. I think this kind of habit uh, would help a person uh, for a whole life, would influence a person's life. Parents could use meditation as a method of education as well. They could educate the kids uh, to be more disciplined and uh, could use it as a timeout method. Anyhow, it is important to practice 